getting out there every day and, and putting yourself in those changing environments where the, mm. the, the surf's absolutely rubbish, but then you just turn around and you face the camera back to shore or you turn it into the sun. Yeah. Just, there's always something, there's always an image to be made and there's yep. always something to translate. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Warren Keelan. Thank you so much for coming on, brother. Awesome, mate. Appreciate you having me on the show, Scott. Yeah, mate. Um, I think everyone's going to be super, super stoked with this. Um, I don't think there's anyone that's going to be watching this that I'm going to uh, shout it out to that hasn't heard of you. But um, I guess just as a, or hasn't seen your work anyway. So I guess just to kick it off, maybe um, for those people that know your work, can you give us just a little bit of a background into yourself? Um, was photography always the plan? Was there something else beforehand? Um, yeah, how did it, how sure. did it all come about? Uh, so look, as, as most people did, I dabbled in a bit of film photography because that's all we had back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did some landscape stuff and I was like long exposure and I just didn't feel it. It wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I was too connected to the ocean. And um, this was, um, oh, this is going back 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, since then I've, I've done a lot of things. I've, I've switched hats a few times. So I've been um, a musician. So I spent nearly 15 years traveling around Australia playing sort of heavy progressive metal. Rock. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, then I became a web developer, so I taught myself how to build websites. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I, I just I just fell into fishing and travel um, photojournalism. Oh, so I, I have a I did have a I do have a love of recreational fishing. Yeah. Um, and then that's what sort of when that finished, what I, it's it's course. Um, it was around the time Michelle and I, my wife, were trying to have kids mm -hmm. and. Um, Unfortunately, we're just one of the, the numbers there that couldn't couldn't have them. So mm -hmm. um, we'd save up a bit of money. And um, just upon hearing that news, we wanted to shift our goalposts and, you know, have a different life. And uh, that one of the one of the, one of the things I want to do is still be creative. So I used some of the money that we'd save to invest in some photography gear. Yeah, and, uh, nice. that was my that was how I delved into digital photography, just through the just through an, like an adverse thing. So, yeah. Um, I never really, I never set out to make images. I just really like being creative. Mm -hmm. And that was just a platform that I could continue doing whilst I was, you know, being, doing fishing, photojournalism and um, um, just documenting life in general. But um, yeah, love the surf mm. and the ability to combine those two um, just meant this is, I think this is what I want to do. So it was, it was also to a creative outlet, but also, you know, a lot of, a lot of dark stuff that I could, you know, use that energy and, and make it positive. Yeah. So uh, 10, 12 or something years later, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, hundred percent. So have you always lived near the ocean? Like had you been, were you a surfer, bodyboarder, anything like that beforehand or what was, where did the ocean part, I guess? Uh, it? Yeah, gosh, just bodyboarding my whole life. Yeah. Um, probably the last decade surfing, yeah. um, but diving, uh, fishing, just always around the ocean. Yeah. Just on yeah. the beach, just kind of like live, I live, live near the beach. Yeah, I can't live without the smell of the salt in the air. So, yeah, um, always been around the ocean and always, you know, just grown familiar with it and respect for it. And um, just to be able to do that, combine uh, two loves. Yep. But, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, do you remember your progression? So, when you first, I guess, jumped in the water with a camera. Obviously, it's a long time between then and now, but there'd be a point in time when you'd start to see things in a different way. Like you've got obviously a unique way that you see things through your lens uh, now of all the work that we can see. So did that come about as a progression of trial and error? You started to see things on the back mm -hmm. of the screen. You're like, oh, I like that. I'm going to go on it. Like, you know, chase I that. Did. And, yeah. yeah. So the, I, the first time I ever got in the water with a housing was I, I actually hired one. My wife hired one for my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea what I was doing. There wasn't anyone to sort of like ask questions. It wasn't a Facebook back then or a, any blogs yeah. or just, just really nothing, just trial and error. Um, I, I think at the time I was using a 24 to 70 trying to capture shore break photos. That was pretty much all I was familiar with surfing small slabs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just found out after three days of shooting, um, the most horrible gray skies and rain and the water was brown that nothing worked and it was absolutely terrible. I hated, <laughs> hated photography. I just, I just said, no, this is not for me. And, but I persisted and, and, uh, I found that. The sun does come out and when you've got a camera in your hand, you can do some pretty cool things with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I started out literally hating my work. I was, mm. I, I was, uh, I had no idea what I wanted to shoot. And I guess that come with time to find out what, you know, you know, to, I guess 
see what sort of personality the ocean can bring out of you and what yep. you can transpose, you know, back into image form. For so sure. that's taken, and I'm still doing that now, but mm. it probably took a good couple of years at least, for sure. Yep. Yep, for sure. Now, you used the word um, make an image before, and I've noticed that in some of your posts when you've um, maybe written a post saying, you know, you know, made this image or you've used that word. I don't know if that's just your language as opposed to people saying taking a photo or has that got mm. kind of more meaning to you in terms of does that come into the, the psychology of like your intention when you're going out to shoot that you're trying to really create something as opposed to react? Yeah, um, awesome question. I, I, I think... So as I've gone from progressing from, let's say, documenting for say fishing articles yep. and, and tourism, mm -hmm. um, I would I would take a photo. There would be a there would be a scene present, and I would just document it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I found that I, that kind of like just wasn't very inspiring, wasn't for me. But then using different techniques and lenses, you could you could create something. I know mm -hmm. the image is still there. So just for an example, a photo, a, a wave would come through. Uh, six different types of lenses would capture six different versions of that wave. Mm -hmm. um, but then you add a few things like slow shutter, um, yeah. close-ups and things like that. And you can, you're making something of your own, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's capturing a moment more so than just documenting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. For sure. And are you envisaging stuff that you want to shoot before you go out? Um, I guess, yeah, in terms of like how much of it is having to just adapt your own creative eye to the conditions that present themselves versus you might be going out and saying, hey, you know, maybe you've got something similar before and you're like, oh, these might be the conditions I want to go and get this certain shot. It's always a mix of both. Yep. Uh, I, I, I shoot repetitiously. I, I like to go out every day and just it's habitual. Yep. Um, because it's just the moments there you'll never capture if you waited for them. So, yeah. and also being in the moment, being present there, it's not even about making a photo or oh, taking a mm. photo. I can go out and swim for two hours and not click the shutter. Yeah. Um, but it keeps that core love connection with the ocean and what I'm doing, but also too gives me exercise and it's good for my mental strength. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, yeah, I think that really helps. If you wait around for too long for the right moments, you can mm. miss the best stuff. Yeah, no, and I really what is, like. What that. is yeah? What is the right moment if you're ever yeah. gonna, you know, exactly. it can come to you or you can you can be out there for it. So yeah, yeah, no, I really like that. That's interesting because I'm similar. I don't shoot in the water as often as you do, but even just I shoot sunrise all the time here, and I just noticed that yeah, even the days that you go down and you don't get the camera out, but you still watch the sunrise, you still get a coffee, you're still out in the salt air, and if you have too many of those days go by not doing it, then you start to notice it. In the rest of your day so it's just that added element of like it's not just about like i guess that's a benefit of like what we do it's sort of it's the thing that maybe started like getting me out of bed in the dark to go and chase a sunrise otherwise like you know what's the point of doing it unless you're one of those crazy sunrise boot campers it's, <laughs> you know what i mean so i think it that's is, like a fascinating part of it yeah. do you know what i've spent so many years um uh playing guitar nights traveling nights getting home early hours of the morning Mm. And I guess you could say that was not a nocturnal life. Uh, so I've I'd grown accustomed to those long hours and um, my wife and I have differing um, ways to look at, uh, I guess, our daytime and our sleep time. Um, she likes to look, she looks forward to the ocean. Uh, sorry, not the ocean, getting up every day mm. and enjoying life from the start. Yep. Whereas I like to extend my night through right through as far as I can. I don't want to, I don't want to give up on a day. So yeah, uh, that means also too that I'm, you know, being an early person doesn't come easy, <laughs> uh, but you're right. It's, it's definitely a catalyst for uh, just getting your ass out of bed. Yeah. Even if you, even if you just take it down the beach and you don't even use it, just leave it in your mm -hmm. car, but at least you're going there with that, with that in yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it certainly benefited me having the camera in the hand. It's it's otherwise. I mean, I, I I've had a few injuries over the years which have uh, kept me from the water. Yeah, and even leaving my house just due to the the nature of the injury. And I can tell you what, when you get back to it after a couple of months away from it, you really do. Yeah, uh, you you do you realize how much you benefit from it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think it's fascinating too, especially the type of stuff that you shoot, there's like, you know, often lots of like little details. And I just noticed it as well. I think there's a famous photography quote that says photography teaches you how to see. And I think it's like, it's a really interesting thing because you just, I feel like as a photographer, you start to notice details. You start to notice other things. You're like, you know, it's funny. Sometimes you'll be 
I'll be down at the beach where I'm like shooting backwash in some areas and it might like there might be a bit of a lull and a random person will walk past and they're just like, oh, you're looking for whales or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just, there's no kind of even concept that you'd be sitting there waiting for two bits of water to clash into each other and you're waiting there to, to photograph it kind of thing. So I think that's Absolutely. Kind of a fascinating thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too, mate. That's that's one of those magic things where you, um, like I like to use waveforms as uh, the focus of my photography. Mm. Uh, however, I do a lot of other stuff that doesn't really get seen, but it's, um, yeah, it's it's a lot of time. You 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 kill a lot of time yep. waiting for yep. those those things to happen. Yeah, but, um, I've definitely I've been down the shore breaks just you know like a like a, a wounded seal in the shore break lying on the sand literally in two or three inches of water trying to capture just some underwater clarity. Yeah, and people come down and say, "What are you doing?" You know, yeah. it's, <laughs> yeah. and you're explaining to them that. I'm okay, firstly, and, uh, this is, and I take the camera and say, "This is what I'm actually capturing." And that's even in two foot of water. Yep. You can you can change perspective. People who don't open their eyes underwater yeah. normally, unless they have a mask on or goggles. Exactly. So yeah. it's uh, can be quite foreign, and it's exciting to show people that. So yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, so as opposed, to, so that's jumping around in the the shore break. When you go out into tougher conditions so some of the you know like a slabby reefy kind of conditions obviously there's a bit of physical preparation involved in that but is there any what's the mental kind of side of that I guess you're in a situation where it could be unpredictable but beyond even just swimming in it then you've got to compose yourself to take a photograph so you've got to be composed enough to see something um, still compose the shot still think artistically in a moment where there's so much going on so do you have any um, you know, practices around that before you go out or how does that work for you? Yeah, I've never been a big wave surfer or I've, yep. I didn't, I never threw myself into giant waves. I'm mm-hmm. happy around the sort of five, six foot mark. Mm-hmm. That's enough for me. Yep. Um, so let's just say don't drink coffee before you go <laughs> out <laughs> to one of these places because it increases your anxiety to start yeah. with. Uh, and it's sometimes when the swells up and the ocean's alive, um, the fear starts before you go to bed the night before. Mm-hmm. Like you start yeah. thinking about it and I say, am I up for this? Or um, what time are we going down? If I'm meeting people there and um, how am I going to scale down the rocks and jump off without hurting myself? And then yep. you get into the ocean and you realise that once you're in there, you are committed to it. Mm. Um, but I think once you are in the ocean and in that in that energy, you kind of lose it a bit. You're kind of like all that, all that worry goes out the window because you – you, you, you've made that decision and you're in the moment and then you're just there to focus and yep. um, you, you experience it better mm-hmm. um, and then you're there focused to make, create images and, and, and be present. So yep. um, all that aside, then you come home the night after that and you realise from the photos that you, you've taken or the moments, just the experience in the water where people may you know, see sharks or I see people go over the falls and, you know, lose gear. I've, yeah. I've had that mm-hmm. happen myself and it's, um, you know, it, can um yeah it can rattle you you know yeah. you think about it and i'll come back and show my wife she says i don't want to know yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I, i'm i'm i've been that, i've been doing that for quite a few years now and uh yeah. i'm a little bit more conscious now just from my age of what i'm what i'm doing and where yeah. i'm doing it yeah so i have a little bit more of a i guess a risk assessment yep yeah, um, yeah. But uh, no, I, I think um, yeah, you, that that in itself is you just deal with it all the time. I think that energy that you you get from that that nervousness and that anxious energy mm. um, is something that pushes you, I guess, too. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. I don't usually like to talk about gear too much on mm. this thing. I'm sort of more interested in the sort of the lifestyle mindset stuff. But you shoot with a seventy to two hundred in the water, do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty. Sure. Can you just like for the people who are, you know, photographers and, um, you know, surf photographers watching this, can you just give us a bit of an insight into that? Because I imagine I've never done it, but I imagine that would be um, even more complex. Again, like a lot of the water photography you see are people shooting, you know, wide angle lenses and inside of barrels and that kind of stuff. So when you're shooting at that focal length, um, I imagine the margin for error is a lot <laughs> slimmer. And um, yeah, yeah it sure is. For? Uh, yeah, if you go from the one extreme to the other, say fisheye lens, you can just hold it out and you'll mm. make something um, yep. and you can be in, right up inside the wave. But that, the, the, the 70 to 200 just gives you so much more freedom. Mm. Um, yes, it's a lot heavier and it's taxing on the body, uh, but just its compression, its clarity mm. um, and 
you can sit back a little bit back from the action. Yep. So you, you can compose things um, a bit more detail with with detail and a bit more clarity. So you, you focus yep. a little bit more better. Uh, yeah. Sorry, a bit more. Um, I just love it. I just love the lens. You, mm. I mean, it's like holding a bazooka in the water. Yeah, yeah. It's you know you're double handed. It's it's, it, it's yep. quite heavy and you can you can use it to steady yourself too. And once you lock your shoulder in and breathe out, it's 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 quite easy to use. And it, um, okay. if it's far, if it's fast enough. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the shots just, yeah, I, I really love it. I just love that perspective and then. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, cool. So how, well, how do you select? So when you're in a situation, like you, it's a really good day, especially some of these moments that you capture, whether it be like a, a really weird shaped slab break or, you know, a backwash moment or just a little moment in time. So when you're shooting that, I'm guessing you're shooting multiple frames. So when you go back and you're looking at those on the computer, like what is it that you're looking for? If you've got, say, you know, 10 to 20 shots, in a sequence, like what is it's the things that make you go, okay, that's the one I want to either publish. That's the one I want to print. Like, what are you, what are you looking I for? I think it's, um, I think it's different for everybody. Mm. Um, we, uh, throughout the years I've spoken to different photographers and surfers and they all love different moments yep. of, of a breaking wave. Mm. And I think the unbroken wave or the, or the just about to break, um, or the, the flare from something, the mm -hmm. detail in that, that all, that, that's really cool. That's yep. that's what I look for. Mm -hmm. Those those moments that probably just you just can't get other than a camera. You can't see it with your back. You see it, but you just yeah. can't. You just can't take it away. So yeah. those those kind of moments. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And so you've got a gallery. So can you take us through this? Because you sort of told us your story before about how you got a camera and got in the water. Um, yep. I'm fascinated about anyone that's doing photography in any form full time because there's usually a point in time where they've left something that may have been more safe or sensible for want of a better word or left like a real <laughs> job or something to move into a world of photography. I did the same thing. I had a perfectly safe, normal sales managing job and um, completely left it with no, uh, you know, no safety net and said, I'm going to become a photographer. Um, so I'm fascinated by everyone's story. So the, the progress into put it like a gallery, like that's, you know, it's an investment and it's, you know, selling prints. I mean, how long have you been doing it for um, and how did that come about? Uh Firstly, hats off to you for doing that. <laughs> I just know when you when you throw you throw everything in, it, yeah. you, 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 you give it one. You've just got one shot, and you mm. don't let it. You just try not to fail. And if you fail, yeah. you just keep going. So mm. um, it happened about oh, it's ten years ago now. So okay. coming up coming up in April two thousand and twenty three, mm -hmm. um, it would be ten years that I've had this store. Yep. Um, I've always wanted to. I, I did the markets. And I, yeah. I really love print. My mm -hmm. goal was after working with magazine print for so many years, mm. I just really love the final product of, of yeah. print. Um, and then I fell in love with, I did fall in love with landscape photography and a lot of those artists had galleries at the time. Mm. And I thought, geez, this is great to be able to work for yourself, display your own art and um, sustain a living from what you're mm. making. Yeah. I thought, wow, that's, that's a wonderful concept. I'd love to be part of that. Yep. Um, I had a lot of tools though from and skills that I'd, I, I'd, I'd learnt and um, mm. from my years in the band. So I mm. was managing, I was creating all the artwork and the covers, mm -hmm. the band posters. So that sort of the graphics was okay. And then I went into web design and I started doing that. So mm. I had all this uh, this background that these tools helped me. Yep. Um, indefinitely, and I'm still it's, it's it's still benefiting me now. Mm. But uh, I, I opened up. It was. Uh, it was April the 23rd, I think, and it was uh, – I threw a bunch of money together and bought some prints. I didn't deck it out. I just painted it, put some lights up in this in this little box. But yeah. I'd, I'd been looking at where I'm in Wollongong. There's a few little cool-looking cranny shops here and there, mm -hmm. uh, and this one came up for lease, and my wife said, look, this is this is a great chance you could you know possibly do some web design some graphics on the side whilst mm. being in an office with you surrounded by your work yeah and I thought that, that's a dream that's mm. that's for many photographers that I, that I talk to they'd love to do that yeah but going from I never really had uh, a full-time secure income so yep. I've been working for myself for so long yeah yeah so it yep. wasn't to you know it wasn't that scary going yep. into it but yep. I, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into but mm. um, yeah, I was excited. It's pumped, and yeah. I had a few friends that helped out with it, with the fit out and things. So, 
investing a bit of money into lighting and, and the initial cost of setting up with your frames and prints yep. and then some advertising mm -hmm. um, and then you've got your gear. But the biggest thing is you need a clone. Like you, you, if I had a clone, life would be so much simpler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So to go and open a store and run a store mm. uh, where you have to be, you've got to be a salesperson, you know, you've yeah. got to be uh, approachable. Um, yeah. You, you want to talk about your work to people. So, mm -hmm. that, and that part of that, I really like. I love telling stories, not just oh. visually as well. So how yep. images came about. Mm -hmm. So that kind of worked. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. And, and it gave me the freedom to just to get away from my house and have somewhere to, I guess, work. Yeah. And, right. and I'm still doing it. But yeah. I'm very, very fortunate, but I've, I've risked a lot and I've, um, you know, I've given up a lot to be able yep. to do this. Yep. And if you, what sort of changes have you noticed over those 10 years? I mean, I feel like in that period of time, social media would have grown massively, which wouldn't have been there before. Um, websites now are basically plug and play. So anyone with a camera can set up a website. Cameras themselves are cheaper than yeah. they've ever been. So um, have you noticed a difference between like, you know, over the, over that time, as far as people buying prints, investing in prints, um, that kind of thing? Yep, most certainly. Um, let's go from the photography side of it. Um, technology's changed, like the even the smartphones mm. enabled people just uh, who, who weren't, I guess, photographers who invested in SLRs and DSLRs to get into the water. Yep. But it's cool in that regard because it also gave them appreciation for what for the ocean photographers yeah. do, yeah, and how and how just is how difficult it is, and what sort mm. of investment it takes to do this full yeah. time. Yeah, that's um, a really good point. Yeah, uh, mm. I've I was fortunate enough enough to come from uh, an era prior to social media mm -hmm. and uh, Instagram. So I I don't know. I, I really love face to face contact. Yeah. Um, just going out and introducing yourself to people and businesses and and telling them what you do and inviting mm -hmm. them to come and see your work yeah. uh, wasn't as scary as what it possibly would be today because um, mm -hmm. everything's done just through social media. There's a lot mm -hmm. of just uh, cold calling and just emails and things. Yeah. But then that, that came about and it was an incredible platform to just showcase your work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the trials and tribulations with something so huge that you don't have any control over. Mm. So I don't, I don't find it too... Uh, disappointing when you know the algorithms change and something yeah. something because yep. i do i don't rely on social media mm. for my income yeah yeah I, yep. not not 100 percent rely on yep. it yeah um, so, so uh kind of um digressed a bit there you did talk about um you know having a gallery and yeah i mean is I there still I, a yeah. do you still find there's a um desire for print clients like people still wanting to yeah, buy you bet. artwork absolutely when i first started out i had um quite a lot of foot traffic um mm -hmm. a lot of people were out and about and the, and the people used to get out and shop and yeah. go into stores um let's go back a couple of years with covid yeah uh, that kind of changed and everybody mm -hmm. had to you had to sort of change yeah. the way you shopped yeah uh, i think it's coming back now but there is a significant drop in just foot traffic and people out and about mm -hmm. um a lot of factors, including, you know, parking and, and petrol and travel yeah. and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Plays yeah. a big difference. Um, yep. And also to, yes, to, to a certain degree, um, I've talked to other photographers who have galleries and they say that um, the cost of living has literally gone through the roof post COVID and during mm. COVID. So yeah. uh, if you look at a print as a luxury item, as opposed to something that you need for mm. your home, Yep. Um, people are now weighing up, they do weigh up that a lot more and they're a bit more wary of what they're spending. Yeah. But no, there's definitely, there's definitely walls there that need prints. Yeah, you know, for sure. So yeah. To, help, you know, to be able to create that for that, for that. Yeah, definitely. Space. Maybe those last couple of years, people were staring at those empty walls a lot more than off than before. They so certainly did. They, they noticed. Yeah, they did. <laughs> people around the world were landlocked and they just, they couldn't get out. So they're becoming more, uh, they're looking at their walls and they're, they're, they're you, you, I don't know. A lot of people were spending money on um, renovations and buying houses uh, as opposed to travelling. Yeah. So that yeah. did that. I saw a rise in sales over that over that period. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's like everything it comes up. It's like a roller coaster. Yep. Ups and downs. Yeah, for sure. And what about um, creatively for you um, running a gap? So when you run a gallery, then your income becomes reliant on selling prints. Did that? Did you notice at any point in time that certain prints sell? Did it change your approach to 
taking photographs in terms of thinking about what you knew would work in the gallery or has it been a I'm going to go out and shoot what I like and then assess afterwards the things that may work for yep. the gallery? Yeah, you're always conscious of that mm -hmm. because I, I do have um, overheads mm. to pay, but I would never compromise my, you know, my what my what I love doing for mm -hmm. the sake of making a picture for money. It's yeah. um, um, there, there is I've done a lot with you know sort of tourism, commercial work, okay, things yeah. like that that I wouldn't consider an art piece for my home. Mm -hmm. So anything that I'd sell through my store. I, yep. would, I would frame for my own house. Yeah, that's that's yep. what I. That's how I sort of look at it. Yeah, if I'm proud to display that in in my home, then I would pop that up in my gallery. Yeah, uh, if someone else wants to do that, then that's just amazing. So yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you found by having the having the gallery, like you touched on it, but be, having people there, being able to, I guess, see the image bigger than a small screen, and then being able to share a story behind it, like that. That's got like so much more benefit than just the constant scrolling of, oh. you know, hey, I've got images and here's something for sale. And, you know, certainly the, is, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, I love digital, mm. digital medium, um, but when it's compressed to a, a mobile phone or a, a device like of that size, you're not really getting, you're just, you're not doing anything, your, your photography justice if you're not printing, I don't think. Yeah. Um, at, le at least something bigger than a phone. Mm. Um, with the technology these days, you know, you can print quite large prints and they, yep. they look incredible. Mm. Um, and I encourage anyone to who, who's into photography, even if it's the, their first week or their, you know, their first year, just mm. get, get something printed yep. for, the, for, the, for the sake of just having some sort of feedback and reward to give you to, to be mm. able to push on and say, I think I'm doing the right thing here. And yep. it's, it's, it's incredibly rewarding. So yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, it's obviously probably before COVID, but um, there was a point when you were doing some workshops. Is that correct? Some mm -hmm. photography workshops? Yes, you bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how was that for you in terms of, I mean, that's then the, um, you know, providing education and passing passing on the knowledge of like all of your years of being in the water and, you know, creating these images and stuff. So was that like a, you know, another aspect for you that was exciting? Yeah, I've got no worries in sharing knowledge with mm. you know. It's I just we're just vessels, and if we if 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 someone tells me something or I learn from somebody else, I've no issues sharing what I've learned as well. Yeah, um, that's rewarding in itself. Mm. Um, I don't like I was touched on before. I don't have um, just my wife and I, so we don't have any kids. Yeah. So to be able to impart knowledge onto somebody else and then watch them um, use that and evolve yeah. and make their own images is just super rewarding. Yeah. The workshop stuff was great because I, I just got to meet so many people. And mm. not only that, I was working with Russell Ward, who you yeah. may be familiar with. Uh, yep. It's one of yep. his prints here on my wall. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so a huge fan of his to start with. And um, now I got to work with him. So we, mm. we, we, we traveled and we, we uh, took people on adventures and made yeah. some really cool friends and, and images through that. Yeah. So that was really, really cool. Uh, yeah. But yeah, COVID was another thing. I won't complain. Yeah. I, but you know, yeah. we did. <laughs> yeah. Every, yeah. Everyone, everyone did it tough. So For sure. but yeah, we didn't. We didn't really. So post COVID, it's just starting to get out and travel and everything. It was a bit rough, and yeah, yeah. The, the cogs are a bit slow to turn there. So yeah, is that something that would be on the agenda again for the future? Uh, yeah, topic? I hope so. In some mm. form, for sure. Mm. Um, yeah. It depends on what I'm doing at the time and, and, mm. and what I've got on the next couple of years, but yeah, yep. I love to, I love teaching photography. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's a really good concept. Like you said, then of all the people coming together, because it's another one of those elements of once again, that touching on the social media world again, like, you know, everyone's, you know, liking and DMing and that kind of thing, but to be able to actually come together with like-minded people and learn yep. in the real space and everything, I think it would be like, yeah, just, it'd be really rewarding. That was missing when I first started. You know, mm, like yeah. ocean photography was just a handful of people and um, they were dedicated surf photographers. Um, yeah. And I, I just couldn't, there was no one there to, to learn from. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, that we, as you, you learn a lot from yourself over the years, but, you know, giving back is, is, is just, as, just as cool. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and so also on your, apart from waves on your social media you've got um photographs of sharks of whales that kind of thing so and you mentioned before that you love diving and that's part of your background so yep. is that another area of interest and is there any things on the the bucket list for that that you haven't done <laughs> yeah you bet uh so i i 
so just to give you a background, mm. I grew up in national parks. So oh, I had okay. um, my parents were park rangers, and we lived mm. in the bush, and we read yeah, injured wildlife, and just I just love nature, and we're yeah. right on the coast. So it was, you know, to be able to take a photo of an animal in its own environment is pretty special. Yep. Uh, a few, it was probably going back eight years ago. Now I visited uh, Lady Elliot Island for the first time. Mm -hmm. It just really, really blew me away to be able to walk off the sand there and see turtles and photograph them meters yep. away from the shoreline. It's just, it's just an absolute privilege. Mm. The then you know going from that to sharks um, shooting great white sharks um, yeah. out of a small cage. That that's an th absolute thrill, and uh, you learn a lot about sharks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're incredible animals, man. I'll tell you. Yeah, uh, and then and then from that to the, the one of some of the biggest animals in the world, like the great the the the, the humpback whales. Yeah, over in, over in Tonga, we that can't Tonga? really do yep. it in Australia just yet, freely. Mm. But um, Tonga was just a life changing experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have you done something like that yourself? No, nah, no, nah, I haven't done any of them. So yeah, I'd love to. Like I've looked at that Tonga thing, like yeah, a bunch of times, and um, yeah, it's just a matter of I guess planning it out and yeah the shark thing as well but yeah it's just i guess yeah <laughs> arranging the the timing and the moments that sort of stuff but yeah i'd love to try it yeah but there's a lot of other animals i'd love to shoot even land mm. animals um yep. but uh for me right now they're just the, i just love the ocean stuff or that that other yeah. stuff if i'm getting too old and decrepit i can sort of jump yeah. in, a, in, a, in a four wheel yeah. drive or go yeah you still go to africa and like sit that. in the back of a truck and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean not that, not that there's anything wrong with that but it's no nah. It's a completely different experience, and I don't think you need as much um, youth on your side. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, mate. Um, oh, there are a lot of animals I still want to shoot and take photos of, and yep. uh, be side by side in the water for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your um, your mate Dave Sanford. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know him well. Like his his work is just incredible, isn't it? It'd be uh, be fun to go on a do an oh, expedition with him. <laughs> absolutely, no, yeah. for sure. His yeah. his work is yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, the places he's been to, uh, you would call beautiful, but then they're, they're not like a a, a a tropical island. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> the tundra is at minus twenty degrees, etc. Yeah, um, uh, make for a challenging environment. But the photos, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. Yep. What about wave locations? So, like, where's been um, where's been some of the places that you've shot that have been, I guess, that have been your favourite place or have been memorable? I mean, ones that you can mention yeah. obviously um and yeah is there any still some bucket list waves that you'd love to go and shoot that you haven't had a chance to yet yep uh as i was saying i grew up in so i was in i grew up in national parks but they were in, they were actually in western australia yeah so okay. down where um russell lives and yep. um, up the coast around perth and north of perth mm -hmm. uh, but i mean they'd be high they're highly on my bucket list they're right up there as well yeah um, i'd love to go to Chiapu. um yep. Not only for the wave, but just for the environment and the landscapes mm. from the water. That yep. would be that would be mind blowing. Yeah, uh, I've been to Hawaii, but I wasn't a photographer at the time. So okay, yeah, um, that's another place I'd love to venture to. But mm -hmm. there's just so many places up and down the east coast here of Australia. Um, I'm yeah. in Hong Kong, and um, you're probably familiar with this. You just live up the road, really. Mm. Uh, yeah, how lucky we are to we just have a, a plethora of yeah. Of renowned surf slabs and breaks and yeah. perfect lefts and rights. Yeah. So I don't have to travel. Um, unfortunately, I don't have to travel more than sort of 50 k's. Yeah. Or, you know, 200 k's to go and shoot some of the best stuff. Yeah. Uh, there is to shoot. And, yeah. And uh, I just make the most of that. Definitely. Is that something that you, um, being down there, I'm sure there's, I mean, it's more, a lot more populated than WA. I'm sure there's so many undiscovered spots along the WA coastline, but is it something mm. that's ever been a factor for you to go and find? new spots, a new little break, a new little wave that may not have been shot. Yeah, and that, that comes down to, so I've, like years of being in a boat with the, f mm. the fishing side of it, yep. I've, I've, you know, traveled up and down the coast in swells and um, beautiful days, but I, I've seen different places up and down the coast that not really accessible unless you've got a jet ski yep. um, or, or boat, uh, coastal walks and things like that, that you hear of. Um, just, you know, I've seen some drone stuff that think you, you just think, geez, there's got to be a wave down there that there's got to be some sort of backwash off that, yeah. that vertical, you know, rock face. Yeah. But it might be 200 k's down the coast and yeah. it's it's highly inaccessible. And yeah, yeah I, I'd love to find some things like that. Yeah. For sure. I was chatting to someone about it the other day and it's like when you've got a few spots that you know work. Um, so say here in Newcastle, there's a couple of backwash spots that I go to and it's like when the conditions... Are good it's almost like you don't want to waste 
the opportunity to know that there's definitely going to be mm-hmm. some good stuff there, but it's probably those conditions that you need to yep. find other spots because you can't just go on a flat day because it's not going to be breaking anywhere else. So no you can take that risk to go and find a different spot <laughs> and miss out on what you know is going to be good. <laughs> Mate, your photos are just beautiful. The, Thanks, the, the way Appreciate you it. capture the light down in, where you are from and, and those moments are just crazy. I'd love to come up like I was speaking <laughs> to you before and, you know, the invitation's there, vice versa. 100%. Um, but you're mm. right. When that, when that energy's there and you know something's going to work and you know you know what's on, yep. it's, it's very hard to uh, drive in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. And, go and, and just go and search for something. Yep. So but with that, the yeah. on, on that note then, with like the gallery, are you, pressure's the wrong word, but how much are you, thinking about adding new imagery? Oh, wow. So I would generally use either my wife or sort of social media as a, as a bit of a soundboard Yep. as to what, uh, I've got limited space in the gallery. So mm. I've only got a few, a few, a few you know, square meters on the walls. So yep. I'm limited to space. So if I was to um, just put an entire, so if I went and shot, a particular wave and I made 10 great photos of that wave. Yeah. I might print one, you know, yeah, yeah. because I've still got to, I've still got to consider space, mm. but um, I'm, I'm generally turning over maybe, maybe five or six new images a month in the okay. store. Yep. Yep. They're in That's frames and, and sort of glass prints and different mediums, but I do have a range of mounted matted prints yep. that I can update as soon as I get a new photo, I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll print that for the shop because generally, yep. once it reaches social media, um, I have to have that all set up and yeah. things in place to be able to purchase it. Definitely, yeah. And personally, do you have any of your shots that you would consider? I mean, you've got like lots of great shots, but that you could consider the most memorable, or even maybe some a story attached to it. Hopefully, we can even like flick it up on the screen. The yeah. image that you mentioned, um, mm-hmm. yeah, just out of your stuff. And is it true? Did I read somewhere that um, you've got a vortex shot that you never took off the memory card or something is that yeah. a, is that a true That's story a, so, yeah. so that that exists and <laughs> it's probably not the safest thing to do what's your you know i still use that memory card yeah um, <laughs> the yeah so let's say let's go with that one because that is probably my most memorable shot yeah most rewarding uh, that that came about from you know was we, we touched base before on you know con- conceiving a shot as mm. opposed to just going out and just capturing something that might happen yeah. Um, this has just come from years of surfing and duck diving around under, under waves and just seeing how the wave uh, performs underwater. Yeah. Um, and I'd seen a few back of the wave shots, but not too many from the front. And I really wanted to capture something um, that you dive into. And once the spiral occurs, um, I was using a, a 5D3, which is when you, when you put an old fisheye on it, um, it just reverts back to three frames a second. And as um, you know, that's actually pretty slow. That's, yeah, that's yeah. pretty slow and clunky. And yeah. for, for, for the moment that occurs so quickly, um, it's pretty fluky when you get one. Mm-hmm. So you, let's say six months of trials and I just almost gave up. But one day I went out on sunrise and just it just happened and uh, I was in the right moment. And I just out of the, fr- the three frames, the first frame is kind of like focus. The next frame's a shot. And then the next one might be just the whitewash or whatever. Yeah. So I, I lifted it up and I, I just thought this is, yep, I think I've got it. This is the yep. one I let out a little holler. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, that, that shot there, I showed my wife and she said, yeah, I think you should um, enter this into a competition. Mm-hmm. And the, I, I did, and I ended up receiving an email to say that it won the, like the underwater category of the landscape photography awards back in yeah. 2013. Yep. And like it just kind of ripped my heart out. I was think, I thought this is crazy. This is this is exactly the moment I've been trying to do to be recognised by yeah. um, people that you look up to. And yep. Not only that, just to just to feel a sense of achievement. But it, that was sure. that that was the moment that I said to myself, I could do this. And yep. that's where the gallery, my my store was born. Yeah, so it gave, me, made, gave me enough confidence to say that I can I can go and do this full time and make a living from it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so that's the photo. I know I titled it Silver Helix. Um, it's the underwater spiraling rings that occur from a vortex. Yeah. yeah. And just on captured on sunrise, it had that sort of silvery texture to it. So yeah, it's yeah, certainly yeah. favourite. Um, yeah. It's actually in my house here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, nice. Unreal. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. that's epic. So what do you? Um, what's your process with? Um, like looking at your photos after a shoot. So if you go out and you know you know it's been a good session, or I mean that's maybe a 
even more extreme example because you were probably super keen to look at that one but just a general session where you're like oh i've probably got something decent are you do you go home and you're like straight looking at the card trying to find the moment on the card where you can maybe remember a couple of things that happened or do you sort of let things breathe for a little bit and go i'll come back and look at these in a different state um i guess i've just spoken to different people about it everyone has a different process i tend to be pretty excited i tend to like if i know something's happened i tend to go home and kind of be sitting in the moment the same energy that i was in when i took it to try and like even like edit it in that energy but then um yep. i know for example i know he's a landscape photographer but your cousin will always talked about that he just like won't even look at the images for a while and just like let them breathe and just go and look at them at a later time so do you have any particular habits with that so yeah a couple you you use the word energy which is mm. which is um that's the main thing I I reckon. I reckon that's the main thing. So when you're in the water and you see something incredible happen and you're there with your camera and you capture it, that, that energy that you get is, is, is incredible, Mm. right? It's, um, uh, you try to replicate that through a photo, but you just can't because you're physically there in that moment. Yeah. Um, If, if you come, if you come back to home and you just dump those and, and, secure them in a drive and just come back to them another, at another stage, you'll have a different energy to look mm. at them. And yeah. I think you can pr- appreciate them differently. So just to, mm. just to go on that, I, when I went to Tonga, um, the process of getting to Tonga was a, it was a bit of a nightmare for me because I ended up getting there after you know, looking forward to this. I got two or three planes there and, um, my housing didn't arrive and half my clothes and they were over, you know, in another airport somewhere with no tags on them. It took a couple of days to get there. So I was frantic and I was, this is crazy. I wanted, you know, I could lose this um, opportunity. Yeah. We got out to see the first whale that I saw and we slid off the boat and we, we, we swam over to it. And I just remember being overwhelmed with emotion. It was like, mm. you're seeing something that's like 30 or 40 ton and it's yeah. just there looking at you and you swim down to it and, uh, this particular way was singing, so the vibrations were so um, uh, so violent coming off yeah. the the whales. So you couldn't even take a photo. You're shaking, mm-hmm. and your heart was going. Yeah, and you and you come back up to the surface only after being down about ten meters, and you know you, you, your mask isn't filled with water. It's like filled with tears. Yeah, because you, you yeah. just can't express how you're feeling. And the the guys on the boat are just like, "How was that?" Mm. And you just yeah, you just kind of you have to let it out. Yeah. If you get some photos from that session and you, you look back at them and think this is incredible i can't wait to get home and look at these on the computer mm. and which i did i got I, the, the, that night i come back to the, the the place we were staying i looked at them on the laptop and nothing felt as i just felt so disappointed yeah none of the photos just captured the experience it didn't yep. it, it just couldn't do it justice mm. and i purposely didn't look at anything for like two months yeah, I put, maybe put one or two photos out from that session, but mm-hmm. still I haven't gone through them because I just, yeah. I don't know, I just, I, I, I know that when I do, I'm going to feel something different. Yeah. But when it comes to waves, yeah, for sure. It's, mm. you know, look at your stuff. You can be so, I uh, can you imagine being so pumped from that session. You've seen what you've seen and captured. Yep. But how desensitized do you become? Mm. By the time you get home, you're so tired and you're sunburned. You've seen everything that happens in nature between two waves colliding. Yeah, you just kind of think, yeah, I think I found one good photo, but you've got a hundred there that express yeah. what you were feeling at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, getting back on that, I've I've done both. I've I've mm. I've found a photo on my phone on my camera, sorry, and um, I'll come back and process that and I'll share that, and yep. then the others I won't I won't touch. Yeah, just just yep. for that very reason. Yeah, it's fascinating, Mark, because it's such a yeah, it's just such an interesting thing that I always think about with, as we mentioned at the start with photography, like it could be the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. It's the thing that gets you in the ocean. Um, when I was just over in Bali the last year, I met a South African guy at a place we were staying. He was like a like a amateur filmmaker. And so he's like, oh, can we make a little like doco film on you kind of thing? And so he was like filming me going around and shooting and stuff. And um, then he's like, oh, I want you to make a voiceover to go over the top of it. And so I just started like writing stuff down, but like the voiceover that came out of it and I didn't sort of plan or anything, but was basically along the lines of like, I think I enjoy the actual chasing and taking an experience of, you know, taking a photo more than the end product itself. Um, just because it's just that thing. It's the whole, the anticipation, like you said, it's the night before when you know the conditions are good. It's like the moment when you're there and then that's all of the, the real energy. And that's the, I guess, the personal stuff that 
photography then gives you like everyone else sees the photo that you post at the end of it and there's like a lot of wow factor but yeah as you said it's hard to portray nor maybe do you would you even want to because that's the that's the kind of stuff that you get for your own soul out of actually like doing it and taking the time and waking up early and driving four hours and being in these crazy little spots that no one would be in the dark and that kind of thing so yeah i think that's that's fascinating yeah i think you have to you have to retain some of that just Mm. just for your personal self yeah uh, if you if you if you're just constantly just shoveling your soul onto social media and you share mm. everything, yeah, uh, then you're not leaving much left in the tank for yourself. And yeah. uh, that's what that, and that's touching back why I go every day too because mm. it's it's not even about the photo half the yep. time. It's just about just being there, getting yep. out of the water, being mm. part of the the ocean and the sea. Yep. But yeah, no, you've hit the nail on the head there. I, I agree 100. percent Yep. It's um, but yeah, it is it is such a personal thing and. I still think you still need to share some some yeah. images, the because that, yeah. 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 and that's the, that's the thing I have. I have I, I rely on this for an income as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not only in print form. Um, I've listened to a couple of your, you know, your your, your shows, mm. and it's a similar thing. You know, photography extends itself to different mediums. Yeah, and um, there's op- there are always opportunities to um, create an income. Yep. Without the print form, mm. I, I'd love it if everybody. Um, purchase prints but you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too that's a constant conversation in my house it's like yeah how can yeah, we just I sell mean, print you... and how can we sell prints and just travel to bali every three months <laughs> if, if you know what if it, if it was if everyone could do that and it was easy then yeah then everyone would be doing it it wouldn't be yeah. worth doing yeah you know I mean? yeah for sure for sure so you've touched on a lot of it so like i might know what you're going to say but just as a parting thing so for there's going to be some people that are photographers getting into photography, um, you know, into ocean photography, they're going to be watching this. So what advice would you give to someone uh, just, just getting into it and just starting out? I think it's always constantly said just to, just to give everything a go and mm. um, uh, just don't give up, just yeah. enjoy and, and enjoy it. Mm. Um, if it's, if you don't enjoy yourself, you're not going to produce your best stuff. Yeah. Um, and Self doubt plays a big part mm. in, in why uh, what, what, why we do what we do, and don't let that limit your um, your freedom and success and your creativity. Yep, it's always going to be with you, but mm. um, yeah, I, I, I reckon just give everything a go and mm. just keep just keep pushing the envelope. Yeah, um, you know everything's in one form or another. Everything's been you know recorded and shot and interpreted before, but it's there's a, there's a photo waiting for you to go on and, and do, you know, your, your yeah. photo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'd like to say that just for an example, you know, pipeline, mm. how many more photos have, can you make of that, that beautiful wave? Yeah. But there, there has to be more interpretations to be made. There has to be yeah. ways you can different, you, Definitely. You differ from other photographers. So yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you found that by the, cause you say that you go a lot um, and yeah, I was exactly the same. Like I still try to be, but especially when I first started, I would just go, every day, basically rain, hail or shine. And I found that it not only presented, like you said before, moments that, you know, you've got to be there to experience the moments, but also it sort of taught me to be able to adapt to different conditions, different lighting conditions, that kind of thing. And like, you know, you can read as much stuff as you want, but without actually practicing in real moments, um, that's gonna, how you're going to improve as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you just said it. <laughs> Couldn't say it any better. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's getting out there every day and, and putting yourself in those changing environments, whether the, mm. the surf's absolutely rubbish, but then you just turn around and you face the camera back to shore or you turn it into the sun. Yeah. There's, there's always something, there's always an image to be made and there's yep. always something to translate. Yeah. Uh, but you, you, know, you when, when you're talking about your own style or you're finding your niche, that may not happen through your being conscious of it. It, mm. it might it might come about by just being there and seeing something that might appear or present itself to you, uh, yeah. and you think, "Holy shit, this is this is, I really want to pursue this, and I, I yeah. want to focus on this, and maybe make this something that I can mm. make my own." Yeah, yeah, a yeah. hundred percent. And that's definitely how the backwash stuff came about for me. Like I was just when I first picked up a camera, I was just obsessed with Chris Burkhardt and everything I wanted to do was surfscape. Mm um you know photography which i still absolutely love and i'm always looking for a wider frame like where possible because i shoot from like land a lot more but um as soon as i discovered like the first 
day accidentally just saw it like a backwash happening. I've just been obsessed with it ever since and chasing it to wherever I could find it and finding all the different conditions for it. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, but it's exactly what you said. That was never something that I saw in a picture and went, I'm going to go and do it. That happened like in real life when I wasn't looking for it and then just completely became obsessed with it like from then on. So yeah. 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 Well, I hope you continue doing that because there's, there's always something new to, to capture, but mm. the, the subject that you have in your portfolio is just, mm. it's, it's wild, mate. Mm. It's, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I, I love it. But just touching quickly back on what I was saying before about um, with your photography, um, mm. go, and, go and shoot other things. Don't just shoot. Yeah. If you want to become an ocean photographer, go and mm. shoot people. Yep. You know, shoot some commercial work, some landscape stuff, some aerial, mm. um, some abstract night star photography, bands, musicians, yep. because yeah. it all plays a part in molding who, who you are as an artist. Yeah, definitely. And you yeah, might find yeah. you love something else, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But being able to adapt to all of those conditions as well, you know, I guess if you're just shooting outdoor in nature, as soon as you start shooting indoors, you realise it's a whole different beast and then you add <laughs> coloured lights into the mix and that sort of thing. And then it's yeah, just like, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's unreal, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been, yeah, such an interesting chat. And um, yeah, I'm sure people are going to be stoked with it. Um, yeah, every time I put a instagram message out of um who do you want me to interview i think it's you and clark little are by far the uh the two names that come up the most so everyone's going to be uh super keen to to watch this one so um yeah thanks so much for your time and um yeah appreciate it absolute absolute pleasure mate thanks for having me on the show really appreciate it